Hello and welcome to another Igloo Imaging tutorial. This one's on isometric text. If you want to follow along at home, the artboard is 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels wide. And the colors I'm using today are these CMYK value colors. If you want to add these to your swatches, then we can get started. Um, if you want to draw some shapes, squares, and change the CMYK values over here in the color palette, you can then just select them all once you've made some colored squares and go over to the burger on swatches and add selected colors. That will just then add all your selected colors. So draw yourself a background with the rectangle tool, start in one corner and drag over. If you can't see the anchor points and smart guides, go up to view, make sure smart guides are on and snap to point. That's just going to make things easier. Also the windows, you're going to need to use some colors and a line and that kind of thing. Or you can press pause and you can just copy what I've got. So my background's in place already. I'm going to take this and just move it off the artboard so I can do a new one. And I'm going to start with text. I'm literally going to write text. From there, you're going to hit Command Shift O, which is going to create the text into objects and we're going to just color drop the yellow you can just add it from the swatch if you like same thing then you're going to go up to effects 3d extrude and bevel and there's some presets there's four isometric presets the one we want is isometric top plastic shading and that kind of thing click ok and go up to object and expand and there we have the basics of it. So we're going to recolor it now. So what we want to do, I'm going to make this a bit bigger. So I'm going to drag this out holding shift and alt. No, that's nice and big. So the first thing I'm going to do is with direct select, which is a <clears throat> holding a and pressing shift, you're going to select that shape, hold shift and select these top shapes. We're going to make it the bright yellow and we're going to give it a black stroke so click the stroke and just hit black and we want it to be two pixels select the darker colored ones again with direct select and holding shift and we're going to change it to our fill color which is the darker blue and again we're going to give it a black stroke of two pixels then we're going to select these ones, direct select again, hold and shift. And we're going to select the lighter and add a black stroke of two pixels. We can select everything. You can see we've got a few anomalies there. We just need to make sure it's rounded caps, rounded joints, and those will disappear. So once we've got that done, we're going to add a shadow. So again, direct select the top shapes and press Command C, Command Shift V, and we're going to go to Object, Expand, Fill and Stroke, and we're going to make everything black. And you'll see if you zoom in, we've got the stroke and the fill that's expanded. So we can just go to Pathfinder and click Unite. If you can't see Pathfinder, it's just under Windows Pathfinder. And once we've got that. With V selected, we're going to hold Alt, where you'll see the double cursors, and start to click and drag and hold Shift. So we want to drag it horizontally to the left, not too far, just enough to get a decent looking shadow. And then with V, you're going to select the first one and the second one holding Shift, so you've got the two selected. We're going to go up to Object, Blend, Make, and then Object, Blend, Blend Options. And you want specified steps here and you're just going to hit up you can see what's happening um, as i'm increasing the steps and you just want to keep going until that creates a smooth line probably somewhere around 80 would be fine click ok click object expand click ok then it expands all those shapes in between but go back to pathfinder and just press unite and what that'll do is take all those shapes 
and put them into one. We can see we've just got a little bit in the middle there. Direct select with A and get rid of that. So then we're going to drag this one down until it lines up with the bottom there. So we're going to command shift left square bracket, which is sent it right to the back. And because my pink back background's in the back, we can't see it anymore. So command and right square bracket a few times. And then we're going to make it the darker pink. From that point, if you want to create the intersecting text like I did um, in the example, you can just duplicate all this. So select your text, leave the shadow, but select the text and with V selected, you're going to Alt and click over. So you're just going to duplicate that top text. You can then just arrange it how you want it to be. So I'm going to delete the E, bring the T in here. And you can see that the T isn't where I want it to be. I'm just moving my background to the very back. So Command Shift and send it all the way to the back and then just bring it forward one. And you can align it. So if you can spend a bit more time doing this, aligning these, but that's the basic idea there. So it's the same principle. You can then just go back and use the shadow again. So select these top shapes and do the black and the blend and drop it as a shadow. If that was useful, please like and subscribe and I'll see you again next time. Thank you.